I think the company has really been on a, a journey that's a, a transition from a, a company that originally started as a high throughput materials development company through to one that's a, a pure play solid state batteries company now. And that's really a reflection of the commercial pull that we've had towards developing solid state battery products. There's a number of advantages which actually makes them very compelling as a technology. The first one is that uh, many solid state batteries are non-flammable. The ones that we make have got a ceramic iron conductor instead of a, uh, an organic liquid electrolyte, which is what you get in a normal lithium ion cell. And because of that, they can't catch fire. So uh, there's been a lot in the news over the last few years about various incidents, which are quite dramatic when they happen, and it, it gets around the risk uh, of that type of incident happening. The other advantage is that they can handle up to 5,000 cycles, which means that you can charge and discharge them 5,000 times uh, before you start to see a drop off in capacity. And that compares with between 500 and 1,000 cycles in a normal lithium ion cell. Uh, the third advantage is that they've got a higher power density. So that means you can charge and discharge them more rapidly. In fact, some of our uh, thin film cells have got a power density of uh, 20C. So in layman's terms, you know, a, a C rate of 1C means that you can charge the battery entirely in one hour. So when you've got a 20C charge rate, that means that you can charge the battery in three minutes. Uh, which, of course, is really useful in a number of applications, uh, you know, consumer electronics and, and also ultimately in automotive. Um, the next advantage is that they've actually got a higher gravimetric and volumetric energy density, which means that you can get more energy into a given weight or volume, so it reduces the size of the battery pack that you need. Uh, and then finally, they've got a, a low leakage current, which means they're really useful for combining them uh, with energy harvesters, which may only produce a small current, so none of that current gets wasted or lost. The, the thin film batteries uh, are the ones actually that are at the highest technology readiness level, so they're the ones actually where we've made robust prototypes, we've characterized them, we've tested them, and we've shared them with potential licensing partners for them to integrate into their own products. And the first product that we launched was our M250, um, which is about a centimeter, a square centimeter size cell. And really that's uh, useful for integrating into a small energy harvester and then um, a, uh, a bit of electronics that acquires data and sends that data using a wireless protocol over a network so that that information, that data can be shared uh, with a control system. So the types of deployment projects uh, that we are currently demonstrating are, first of all, uh, a wind turbine condition monitoring example, where we combine uh, the battery with actually a vibration harvester in the wind turbine blade, and that allows the, the strain situation and general condition of the blade to be monitored, uh, and that information to be sent to a control room, so that actually you don't need to send out a maintenance crew regularly to what's often a remote location, uh, and you can tell if that blade is going to uh, be destroyed or not, actually, and predict you know, before you get to a, a catastrophic failure. And actually, the cost of one of these turbine blades is about $300,000. So the last thing you want is to end up with a broken blade, and imagine the destruction that that might cause if you had that in a wind farm, because other turbines around it might be impacted. So that's a really good example of, of where the condition monitoring adds a lot of value. Um, the other example is uh, the project that we announced just last week, which is actually a European collaboration uh, with uh, four other European companies. Uh, and it's a, a multi-sensor platform that includes sensors for uh, movement detection. So you can deploy it in rooms like this and, and monitor occupancy. Uh, light detection, so it can switch on lights, uh, heat and humidity detection, so it can be used to uh, manage an HVAC or a, you know, heating and, and ventilation and air conditioning system, um, and also actually be deployed in smart cities for pollution monitoring. Uh, again, wireless, so effectively it's a fit and forget beacon, self-powered, right, you're, you're harvesting energy 
uh, in this case using one of Lytricity's photovoltaic panels um, and, and long lived, uh, again that 10 year uh, cycle life really important on a, a daily charge and a recharge cycle. You know, one of the things that's really important is that we can demonstrate manufacturability of this technology. Um, that's that's always a really important step for a technology like this. That's you know, physical IP needs to be turned into something tangible that's at a decent price point. So let's start with the thin film part of the the portfolio, the Stereax batteries that we've launched. We just announced a partnership with Semifab, which is uh, a fab based up in uh, Glenrothes in uh, Fife in Scotland. Uh, used to be part of what people refer to as Silicon Glen. Uh, and actually that's a, a nice fab with um, the ability to be able to take the process that we've demonstrated in Southampton and turn it into uh, a robust manufacturing environment. So we can actually produce these millimeter scale batteries on wafers in Southampton in the hundreds, thousands, you know, even tens of thousands uh, per year. So we can seed the market uh, with those devices. The next step up is to go into the hundreds of thousands and millions. Uh, and that's what we can do with Semifab. And then ultimately, if uh, you know, many millions of uh, units need to be produced, that technology can be stepped up again to one of the big fabs. Typically, they're located in Asia. Also on our roadmap, uh, we've got millimeter scale devices, which are really designed for some of the, the medical applications uh, that uh, people are interested in. Uh, there's a broad range of applications, including uh, neurostimulators, uh, blood pressure monitors, um, glucose monitors, so that patients who've got diabetes don't have to take a blood sample regularly. They've got an implant that actually does that automatically for them. Um, and um, even CRM devices, actually, you know, pacemakers. Um, so that's a very interesting market. That's really why we've been going down the miniaturization route. We shipped some samples uh, in the last quarter to uh, potential customers in the US uh, and Asia. Um, and then most recently, uh, the large format or Goliath cells. There's been a lot of PR, a lot of interest actually in solid state batteries for automotive over the last six months for good reason. You know, we're seeing uh, a real sea change in the automotive industry where their historic dependence on the internal combustion engine uh, is changing and, and people are more interested in hybrid and electric vehicles for a whole host of reasons not least environmental and uh, economic. And uh, solid state batteries have got a lot to offer that industry. You know, our view on that is that we need to partner with much larger strategic organizations who have got a vested interest in making sure that this technology gets commercialized uh, and can actually support us on that journey. Certainly can't do it alone. I think Illica is a very innovative uh, you know, technology development focused organization, but ultimately we need to license this into bigger organizations in order to get it to market. And that's where uh, the Innovate UK uh, Faraday Battery Challenge competition has been really instrumental in catalyzing uh, relationships for us in this sector. So uh, we have over 4.1 million of funding that's been offered to the company uh, by uh, the Innovate UK competition, actually from the second round of that competition. And we've partnered with Honda and Ricardo uh, in the Power Drive Line um, program, which is all about rapid charging uh, of solid state batteries. So there will be a, a battery module that will be a, a deliverable from that program. And then the second program, which is due to start shortly, uh, is with McLaren. Uh, and that's, of course, got uh, perform performance car oriented uh, deliverables as, as part of that program. I think there's you know, more to be expected in terms of uh, future news flow in this area. Um, there's lots of companies that we haven't yet partnered with who would like to get uh, access to the technology. And of course, uh, we're in discussions with them and welcoming that interaction. Our business model is one where we interact with OEM partners and supply chain partners uh, in development programs. Uh, we recognize revenue uh, from those interactions, and then we flip into a licensing model 
to give the commercialization partners the opportunity to take the technology to market in their products. And there's a, a license fee that's paid to ILICA to reward us for transferring that technology, and then royalties that are paid when the products are taken to market. And those royalties are you know, set at a level that makes economic sense, uh, that allows uh, our OEM partners typically to make a decent margin on the products that they're selling, but also is uh, aligned so that uh, ILICA gets uh, a sensible return on its R&D investment. It's quite similar actually to the model that ARM has used and, and we have you know, leveraged the ARM network. Uh, our previous chairman, Mike Ingalls, of course, was the commercial director there. And we've just recently announced the appointment. In fact, it was just on Wednesday we announced the appointment of Monica Biddulph, who uh, was a senior licensing manager uh, at ARM and, and she's now an MD on our board. Uh, and uh, is uh, continuing that sort of commercial input into our business. Yes, I think our numbers are very easy to understand. We've got about 5.8 million uh, on the balance sheet at the end of the first half. Um, that was actually um, um, supported through an equity raise that we did earlier in the summer in 2018. Um, our cash requirements over uh, the year are about four and a half million, and we offset against that the revenue. So this year we'll have about 2.6 million uh, of revenue. So that's about a net burn of say 1.9, two round numbers. And of course uh, we're ramping up revenue, uh, and um, you know we will continue to drive the company towards profitability using that business model that we've just discussed. So I'm an engineer by background. Uh, and I've worked in a number of different high-tech industries. I spent about 20 years in the, in the, in the Cambridge area. Uh, and in that time, I also founded my own automotive electronics company, uh, which we grew up to sort of a 15 million pound company before, before selling it on. Um, after that, I've worked for a number of uh, large uh, companies, uh, mainly in the aerospace uh, arena, where I've been a, a, a fellow, an engineer, uh, leading technology and strategy. But I've also been involved in that time, you know, looking outside the business and got involved with, uh, with Ilica because um, I, I looked at it. When you look at technologies, to me, the things about technologies are, first of all, can you see a real need for them? Can you see a real use? And, and it doesn't take many seconds to realize that that's the case with Ilica's technologies. There's a, there's a need, whether it's in uh, whether it's in medical, whether it's in industrial, whether it's in automotive, you can see there's a need. And you can also see that this, it's disruptive. It's disruptive and, and game-changing, which means that there's a lot of opportunity around it. But you can, see, you can see needs and you can see things that are disruptive, uh, but then you have to decide, is it real? And actually, again, when you look at the technologies that Illica are developing, you can see that it's real. It's something that you know, can be made to work and can be made to happen. And then finally, the most important thing to bring it all together is you can have all of those things, but if you haven't got a really good team there and a team that gels and will work as one, it's probably not going to happen as seamlessly and painlessly as you would like. And when you look at the Illica team, uh, I think you've got all of the right ingredients. So for me, a lot of experience in the industry, and then I looked at Illica and saw, uh, saw a real opportunity, and then there's a belief in the team that you've got the right people to make that happen. So it was a, it's a good choice. Yeah, we do, we do have to focus because it's a technology that can be applied in lots of different ways, from medical through to automotive, through to industrial, and they're, and they're huge, huge markets in themselves. Uh, and you do get a lot of people knocking on the door. It's a highly technical sell. Uh, and so it's a number of things that you have to work on to align. You have to think about the timing of maturing that technology to market. You have to make sure you're talking to the right people in the businesses. So there's people that are in supply chain management through to R&D, through to the people that really are leading and pushing on the right strategies. And you have to be quite ruthless in terms of how you think about that and make sure you are talking to the right people or else you can space, spend a, a, and waste a lot of time and a lot of energy focusing on the wrong parts. And as a, as a board, we um, continuously work with Graham and the team to make sure they're clearly focused and they can explain their priorities of who they're talking to why and when.